3D printing needs no introduction, especially to an audience like ours. But how can you get into the game cheaply and effectively? Hi, my name is Jazzy, this is Stuff We Make, the show where we make stuff. I've recently been in touch with Elgu, who makes some of the best 3D printers on the market. You've probably heard of their Mars line of printers, maybe the Neptune filament-based printer, uh, their giant Saturn, maybe even their upcoming Jupiter, or maybe their Mercury Wash and Cure Station if you're in like the 3D printer loop at all. They're, pr they're a pretty big name, they're really cool. For this video, I'm going to assume that you haven't done any research yet, but as we know, a lot of us are nerds, so you probably already know the tea on 3D printing. So in our chatting, they asked if I would like a review unit of the Mars 2 Pro to talk about on the channel. This is me disclosing to you that they sent me a printer for free, but I want to make absolute clear that my opinions are my own. I was not given any sort of script or requirements. They just said, here's a printer, review it on the channel, have fun. I said, cool. I do have to say, their customer service is super, super friendly. So thank you so much to everyone I was in contact with via email. Y'all are really cool. Um, that being said, let me take you to the bench and we could talk a little bit about the science of 3D printers and why resin printers in particular are so cool. Lots of you will likely already know how this works, but for those who don't, here's a very simplified overview on how stereolithography works. It projects the image through the transparent bottom of our resin vat, which is filled with a UV-sensitive polymer that hardens when exposed to UV light. The hardened resin adheres to the build plate, which then moves up and down so the next layer can be printed, then the next, to the next, and so on. Around the unit is a protective acrylic lid that keeps the resin from curing prematurely and ruining the print. When all is said and done, your finished model is ready to be cleaned and cured. Alright, now it's time for everyone's favorite content. Unboxing! That means I could have put on this really attractive number. First up, we have the mini air purifiers, which is one of the things that I spent my own money on. It was not sent to me by Elago. They come with instructions, a charger brick, two units that charge via USB, and function by using activated charcoal, which you get two extra blocks of. This will significantly cut down on the amount of fumes we have to deal with. Next, we have the Mercury Wash and Cure, which was also purchased with my own money and not sent by Elegu. Ironically, they arrived on the same day, which is pretty cool. Inside this meticulously packed box, we have the unit itself, which is bagged and sealed in plastic to protect the acrylic lid, and filled with polystyrene to protect everything on the inside. There's a plastic snap lid container for the washing and this little fry basket to hold the models. The current is created by a little magnetic disc that spins this propeller. Then we have the first official package from Elegu themselves. First, these are two 500 milliliter bottles of their UV curing resin, both of which came boxed and bubble wrapped, which I'm very happy to see. And then the main event, the printer itself. It comes in an absolute beast of a package that I can barely fit into the shot. Inside, we have a ton of packaging to protect the printer's actual box containing spare FEP sheets, instructions, a box of accessories and tools including hardware, the power cable, a plastic scraper, an angled drip mount, a pair of snips for removing supports, paint strainers, spare masks, a metal scraper, the USB stick with the test prints, a rubber gasket to keep the smell inside the printer, and latex gloves for handling the resin. But let's get to the actual printer. It is bagged and covered in plastic just like the wash and cure and filled with polystyrene to keep the innards safe, such as the build plate, the screen, and the resin vat. With everything unboxed, let's get it all set up. Now's a good time to talk about safety. Resin does not play nice with organic organisms like us humans. This stuff is nasty. <laughs> now, this isn't me saying that you should be afraid of it because a resin 3D printer can be very safe and very effective at making cool stuff if you know what you're doing and you use the tools properly, just like any other power tool. If you do get resin on your skin, soap and water, wash this off immediately. If it gets in your eye, call for help right away because it's not fun going blind to try to make some D&D &D minis. But again, like I said, don't let this deter you from getting into 3D printing. These are just standard precautions, and honestly, you're more likely to get hurt in a car crash than with a 3D printer, especially with a Mars. Now that you have taken all the necessary precautions, let's go back down to the workshop and let's, uh, let's play around a bit. We start by getting the Mars set up with the included rubber gasket, plugging it in, and going through the calibration steps. We plug the included USB into the Mars and put on some gloves and our favorite face mask. As per the instructions, we fill about a third of the vat with resin, 
select one of the included models, and let the printer do its thing with a fancy time-lapse shot. All right, kind of breaking the voiceover illusion for a second. I'm not sure if you can see this, but the test print completed. We have one up here and one down here. <laughs> so we're going to uh, play back the slow-mo and figure out what went wrong, see what we can do to fix it. So this is really interesting. It looks like on one of these top layers, it must have gotten stuck to the FEP sheet. So I'm going to have to research why, uh, what could have caused that, but I'm still going to cure it and we're still going to see how it turns out. Jazzy from the future here. Turns out we just need to re-level the build plate. This is a super easy fix and absolutely user error. I went ahead and did the post-processing on the failed print to show you the process, but I went ahead and re-ran the print and it came out perfectly fine. So the rest of this footage is going to be from the failed print, but please know this is not a printer's fault. This is my fault. We're going to wait until the resin stops dripping before we scrape it into our bin and let it wash in simple green for a bit. This is a great alternative to IPA if it's too expensive where you live. After a rinse, we're going to set our washing cure to cure mode. This will finish the hardening process and prevent any excess resin from seeping out. Every print needs a different amount of curing time, so just use your best judgment to avoid over curing, which will make it brittle and cracky. When all said and done, we have one completed beautiful 3D print. To say that I'm happy with these results would be an understatement. The amount of detail on every single layer is some of the best I've seen. Truly leaps and bounds ahead of any sort of filament-based solution. Granted, this is not a 4K screen and you can only go up from here. The fact that this is kind of like a baseline unit is really impressive. To the naked eye, unless you're like this close to your model, you're not going to see any like layers or striations or anything like that. Now, another thing I really want to say is that the mercury washing cure and then the air purifiers, which again, I did pay for myself with my own money. That part is not sponsored. I really like those. Those really help the workflow quite a lot. And I was actually able to stay down in the basement while it was running without dying. So that's cool. Now air purifiers really helped clean up the fumes and everything and made it smell a lot less toxic. I wasn't congested. I wasn't feeling any sort of way. I'm happy about that. Generally, you shouldn't be in the same room as a printer as it's running, even if it is well ventilated, but having the actual built-in air purifier within the printer itself and also the two additional ones, that really, really helped. And the mercury wash and cure in terms of like, I didn't have to like get my hands in the thing and touch the fresh prints and it really, really helped a lot with like the mess factor. And I was really, really happy with that. So those are definitely products that I can recommend. Now, when it comes to actual printer and the resin, which again was sponsored, was sent to me, full disclosure, in my own humble opinion, I did not have any issues with it outside of my own user error. And that's just because I've never used a Mars printer before. I have nothing but good things to say about that, and that's not being swayed by the fact that they sent me one. That's my honest-to-goodness opinion. I can put an honest recommendation on the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro and their photopolymer resin. Maybe I'll get to try out some of their other products in the future. Who knows? I'd really love that. For now, though, that is all the time that we have for today. I want to thank Jamie once again for having me on her channel. I know I always say that, but I really do appreciate it so much. I'm having a lot of fun creating these videos and showing people how to make things. That's one of my favorite things in this mortal coil we call life. And also a big thank you to Elegu for sending me the printer and the resin and helping me get into like that ecosystem. I sincerely hope this video helped convince you that if you're on the fence about 3D printing, it's time to jump in because you can make really, really cool stuff with it. Going forward on the channel, I absolutely plan on using the printer again to make more stuff. In fact, some of the upcoming videos I have in my head absolutely utilize it. So that being said, I have been Jazzy. This has been Stuff We Make. Stay classy and we will see you next time.